what is going on guys tonight we're going to do a simple video on how to not build a computer so what we're going to do is we're going to watch the verge on how to build a computer that they posted last year uh september 17th 2018 so tomorrow's the 17th so well in 10 minutes to 17 so pretty much a year ago uh, I haven't seen this video in a very long time, so this is my second or third time watching it. Uh, my third, probably. But it's been a while. So we're going to rewatch it, and we're going to kind of go over the things you shouldn't do and the things you did wrong. Uh, and try not to laugh, I guess. Try not to laugh. Let's, uh, let's jump right into it here. Let's go ahead and uh, hit play. So a few years ago, TC, or Managing Editor, built a gaming desktop. But it's kind of out of date, and it's definitely not going to hold up for Battlefield V. So, let's build a new one. You can build a gaming desktop for around $1,000, but I want to go all out, so I spent around $2,000. PC like this is going to be able to play most games at all Capital One spent so, $2,000. you need to build a desktop? Well, of course, first you need a table. Preferably not metal. If it's going to be metal, have an anti Guys, you need a table. I mean, that's just common sense, common knowledge. Applicator. An Allen wrench, some tweezers to tighten up the wires, oh, Swiss Army knife, which... <laughs> Hold on, I remember this. So he called zip ties tweezers. They're not called tweezers. They're called zip ties. I use them on a daily basis on all the PCs that we build. We don't use those little garbage ones that the manufacturers provide you. Uh, we actually use the big ones. These, you buy them at Home Depot. They're pretty big. We buy like a pack of 400 or whatever. Uh, but yeah, they're not tweezers. By no means. <laughs> Hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. And last but not least, screwdriver in it. Hold on. Allen wrench, some tweezers to tighten up the wires, a Swiss Army knife, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. Why a Swiss Army knife? Why not just get a Phillips head screwdriver? And then he says Swiss Army knife with hopefully it has a Phillips head screwdriver. So he's telling you on how to build a computer and what telling he's what, what you need. And he's literally saying, go buy a Swiss Army knife. Hopefully it has a Phillips head screwdriver. And last but not least, an anti-static bracelet Thanks. to protect you and the parts. These are the parts you're gonna need, but more importantly, before we get there. An anti-static bracelet that apparently does not connect to anything to ground you. That's not how you ground yourself. The anti-static wristbands, the legit ones, have this ribbon that go from them, and they connect it to the case. That's how you ground yourself. Or, you don't have to use one of those. You could actually literally just keep touching the case, and you get grounded. This guy is in a whole level of stupidity. Alright, we, we don't need to learn all this. We've... The processor is like we understand how all this works, so let's uh, let's fast forward. Part. So it's best that you unbox them, isolate the parts that you really need, place items into the case, and make sure that they all fit, and then start working. And wait, 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 wait! Did he just say place all items into the case to make sure they all fit? How do you? What? Oh my gosh. Now we're really going to start building by adding the motherboard in. Some notes about installing motherboards. Wow. They're really delicate. You should be really careful with them. And screw in with confidence, but also don't screw in too hard. Otherwise, you could crack the board. I screw in with confidence, but not with too much confidence because you can crack the board. Motherboards are not delicate. They're not. If you screw into it, it you'll know when to stop. Like while you're screwing, it's going to stop on you. You're, you're not going to keep going i mean that's just common sense on that the only thing you got to be worried about on a motherboard is the pins that's it that's all you got to watch out for Asus's z370 motherboard for two main reasons one it has built-in wi-fi and bluetooth and also it has support for nvme ssds meaning you can get really fast ssds that are really easy to install pay close attention to the brace that goes at the back of the computer you always have it's not called a brace it's called an io shield to make sure that you really Your lord it in because there's no screw it's really just you have to make sure you hammer it in please don't do that don't hammer in an io shield i'm not sure why he said that when he didn't clearly he doesn't use a hammer outside of the case and clasp onto the frame and this is very important because otherwise 
you can't align the motherboard correctly with the hole. So we're just going to start installing all eight screws. This guy does things so backwards. So next we're going to install the RAM on the motherboard. I chose Corsair's 16 gigabyte Vengeance LED RAM for two main reasons. One, it has LEDs and we do like lights on our gaming desktops. We like Secondly, lights. Uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz, I believe. So it's That's not fast RAM. This motherboard supports that speed, which is most important. <laughs> Open the slots first. And with aligning... Why is he readjusting all four slots when he's only installing two? And tw default RAM speed is 2133. Tw 2066 is not that fast. The average is 3,000 to 3,200 and then upwards. With the middle of the strip, not with the end, and just lining that up with the logo. So once you hear that solid clask and you don't see the gold connectors on the side anymore, clask. that's when you know the RAM is in. Step three, we're going to install. One other thing to mention, as you can tell, I don't know if you can see it right around here. He installed the RAM incorrectly. Just to explain this to you guys real quick. Hang on. So I'm going to make this simple. You have four slots, right? Let's, let's just go from left to right. You have one, two, three, and four. If you want dual channel memory on an Intel chipset, you literally do, I mean, it really doesn't matter, but uh, I, you do, let's do it this way, two and four, uh, or one and three. You install them separating by one space, and that's how you run dual channel memory. This guy literally just put them side by side on three and four, and now they're running in single channel memory. So he's not getting the full 2166, like he's uh, referring to. The hard drive, or in this case, the NVMe SSD. Lord. I chose this format of solid state drive so that I could input it into the motherboard without having to worry about extra wires or putting it in a separate part of the case and just getting really messy. This is from Kingston and it's 480 gigabytes, so it's not a lot, but you can always upgrade this and swap it out. And it's only held down by one screw and the latch. So it's really simple and really straightforward. Speed for gaming is important when it comes to a hard drive. You want files to write quickly and you want games to load quickly. So that's why it's best if you use an SSD. Okay, so step four, we're going to install the graphics card. I chose PNY's GTX 1080, which is overclocked. And so it's a pretty neat overclocked. situation. You're just going to find the gold connectors. And you're gold going to find this bracket with the back end bracket of your PC case. Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're going to put in the system. No. I'm just going to pick Always the do the top slot to run six, time 16. The SSD is at the bottom, and I don't want to cover it. I just think it looks nice. Click down. Take your remaining brackets and just put them in the spot that you have. So he literally installed one GPU. That's it. And he took out all four brackets. It literally takes up two brackets unless you had a card that support that takes up three. So he removed all four and now he's reinstalling the last two that he took out just at random. You don't have to screw these in. They get bolted down by the back end. They do not get bolted down. These are not bolts. These are screws. Don't do this. Make sure you actually screw it in. He's using the case itself. That That's horrible. Corsair's 850 watt power supply because I need enough headroom for ray tracing GPUs when they come out and I don't want to have to upgrade it again. So all you have to do is take the brick and make sure that you align it. Not a brick, it's a power supply like you mentioned earlier. It with these little insulating pads so the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. <laughs> so just take it in. He said so it doesn't short circuit. It does not short circuit. Those are actually designed, they're anti, they're pretty much vibration pads. So when you install the power supply, it's only being held by four screws. And to prevent it from actually shaking, because it's got a fan and it's spinning at a, it's a 120 millimeter fan. Uh, it, it, so that way it's not metal on metal. You're not going to hear a, a continuously like clacking noise. That's all it is. It's not, there's nothing to do with shorting your power supply or any of that jazz. Slide it in nice and easy until you have a snug fit and then shift it to the back. Also, if you guys notice, he installed the power supply correctly. The fan, the 120 millimeter fan that actually is exhaust that's sucking in air and exhausting it through the through the back of the power supply is supposed to be facing us right now. It's supposed to be facing outside of the case because the case that when it closes, it has holes of vent ventilation so that way the power supply can breathe on its own. Now he put the fan right up against behind the motherboard where it has zero space to breathe. Oh, right this guy. Now you just take the required screws and you tighten and screw in. Also, you don't screw in the power supply. You first do the cables. In this case, it's going to go on the top end of the case. 
So we're just gonna have the hose hang out for a little while until we install the processor, which is gonna come a little later. Always be sure to try to place. Also, as you can tell, he has no fans installed on the radiator. Don't do that. Make sure you install the, 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 the fans before you put it in the case. Place it in the system first before you install it, because you can see it takes up a lot of space. But in this case, no pun intended, it fits in perfectly. No pun and intended. We're going to start screwing it in. And so there's nothing special about this screwing process. They I remember this part. Screws because they go through the entire frame of the cooler. No, they don't. <laughs> this guy literally. OK, so when you buy a Corsair cooler, Corsair provides you these little short screws. They provide you long screws. The long screws are for the fans. Literally, it goes through the hole of the fans and then it gives you a little bit of space. so You can actually screw it to the radiator. This man used the long screws and he screwed through the whole entire thread through the radiator. So he literally went through the rad, literally just through the rad, like if it was nothing. Wrong screws, buddy. And they take forever. They take forever because he used the wrong screws. So next up, cables. Every power supply is going to come with a big bag of Velcro cables. It's kind of daunting at first, so you always have to find the ones that are going to fit. In this case, you need to match those cables with the correct descriptions on the power supply. Next step is we're connecting the power supply to the motherboard with the 24 pin cable. We're just matching that cable from the motherboard, threading it through the back, and attaching the 24 pin header to the power supply so that we can have one of the connections complete. The next few additions will be for the GPU, for any specific ports that the case has, for any lighting that the case has, the CPU cooler, the anything else really. We're installing the CPU, the heart of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. So to do this, we're just going to remove the plastic covering that they put on the motherboard. Don't do this. We're just going to take this little plastic Don't do this. out. Let's just toss that out of here. Okay, so when you're installing a processor on a, on a motherboard, on an Intel, they have that cover on top. And what the reason, the reason why that cover is there is to prevent, because you have 1,151 pins on the motherboard. So if one of those pins bend, it can cause you a lot of problems and it might not, it might not work at all, uh, the CPU once you install it. So the reason why that's there is once you open the top, you gotta be ready to put in the processor. You put in the processor, when you close the latch, once you clip it down, that little plastic thing pops. So it pops on its own, you don't need to mess with it. So what he did is he removed and it now we have an exposed, an exposed holder pins. Slot on the mother so that, see that water cooler right there that he has? He has it flapped over. That water block can fall down and just hit the hit that portion of the motherboard and just destroy those pins. That not everyone may get, but this motherboard that we got from ASUS definitely does have. It's called the CPU installation tool. Please don't use that either. Really That's useful if you want to install a Core i7 hexacore CPU. Yeah, we've got one, and it's an eighth generation yeah. chip. And it's anybody can get those. And it's He's making a big deal about it. So what having this little installer does for you is it's basically a brace. God, I really hope this guy's not building computers right now a year later. CPU. Where is this guy? With the triangle that you'll see on the bottom left corner. And this will make it easier for us to apply it to the motherboard and then apply a thermal case and then apply a CPU cooler on top. And we're just going to carefully lean it down into the system and make... Also, when you put a processor in, don't push down on it with your fingers. Because if you don't put it in right, you might be pushing down on a wrong spot and you might bend some pins that everything lines up and we're going to clasp down on it and we'll be good to go. So we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. Every CPU cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste automatically oh. applied in a circle around it, but it's usually not enough. It's good, essentially PC building practice to have a little. No, please don't do this. So if you want to apply your own thermal compound, make sure to wipe off the thermal compound that the provider or the company provides. Uh, you never want to apply thermal compound on top of the thermal compound that is already with the water block. That's just too much, especially, a little bit extra, yeah, you just don't want to, it's, don't do that either. Make this guy is applying it is incorrectly as well. To the top end <laughs> Make sure you spread it or you just put a so pea sized dot in the middle and let it spread on its own. Here, Look at that mess. Right here. Look at the dual channel or the single channel memory that's all put together. Processor, but it's also going to be close enough to actually stress levels are through the roof with it, but basically keep it cool take thumb screws like this and just screw them on so now that our internals are done we're going to put all the panels back on so we have the top glass side glass front glass and of course the back panel where all this fun stuff is happening 
so we fully your lord look at the look at the spider web in there guys like i don't understand what they were thinking when they built this computer like or when they got whoever this was to to do this for them but essentially this is how the computer came out i mean just just easter eyes on that mess what were they thinking and, and the other thing is what's going on here with the water block there's one two three screws there's the fourth it's missing a screw also memory installed incorrectly and why the heck are there a few let's call them tweezers <laughs> sitting right here zip tied like they're not even zip tied to anything they're just they're zip tied but they're not zip tied all the way like they're just sitting there Oh, it's just a mess. Huge mess. It's, it's gross. It's disgusting. <laughs> don't do it. If you want to laugh, watch the video, but don't watch the video to actually learn how to build a computer. Especially, I, we build computers here at PowerGPU every day, and, and seeing this, it just hurts. And, and honestly, it, it kind of sucks because I've actually seen a lot of people start their own business or try to start their own business with PC building, and I see a lot of this stuff continuously. And once they build one computer, they think that they're automatically an expert. This is a prime example of someone that doesn't know what they're doing, uh, thinking that they're an expert and telling people, yeah, I build my own computer. Yeah, you, you do, but the wrong way in a, a very unsafe way. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I'm just uploading YouTube videos or whatever for fun. There's no ads or anything like that. So uh, we're just doing all this for fun. Uh, if you guys do want to support the business though, and you guys do want to... Uh, Get some little perks here and there. Uh, join the Patreon. Also, you can join the Discord. It's in the link below, or you can go to the website to get it. Uh, if you're ready to place, place an order uh, through PowerGPU, make sure to go to the website, fill out the form. Uh, we'll send you an email as fast as possible. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace.